Error correction is one of the most common types of question we can see in a verbal aptitude test. The purpose of this question is to test our knowledge in English grammar and usage. Though this seems to be a tough task, it is not as difficult as we think. First of all, we should identify the areas which are fewer in number where we make mistakes in English. See, the sentences may vary, but the errors will be the same. Hence, let us spot out the important grammatical mistakes in English. Tense is the grammatical term for time. We cannot utter a single sentence without relating it with time. There are 12 tenses in English language. That means we can express 12 different timings of a single action. When the tense or time of an action changes, its meaning also changes. Let me illustrate with an example. Once, three friends, Ram, Rahim, and Roy, were walking on a street. On the way, they reached in front of a restaurant. Then Ram said, let's have some food. Then Rahim said, I had my food. While Roy said, I have had my food. Anyway, all the three entered into the restaurant and Ram ordered food for two. One, of course, for himself, but the other for whom? To get the answer, we should have a sound knowledge about the uses of tenses. When we say we had food, we mean that we had food at some point of time in the past and we don't mind having food at the time of speaking. But when we say we have had food, we mean that we completed having food in the present time and we don't want to have food at the time of speaking. Hence, we can make sure that Ram ordered food for Rahim, who said, I had my food. Now let us see some more examples of errors caused by wrong tenses. Refer to the examples In the first example, the verb or action word is insult. This word shows the habit or nature of the subject he. Habit or nature should be expressed with a simple present form of the verb. The first sentence is in present continuous form. Hence, the second sentence is the correct one. In the second example, the action staying started in 2000. It is still continuing in the present time. When we want to express an action that started in the past and going on at the time of speaking, we must use present perfect continuous tense. Therefore, the right sentence is the second one. All perfect continuous tenses indicate the duration of time. So, they carry either since or for with them. In the third example, the verb passed is past tense. Here the action took place in 2010. When a specific time in the past is mentioned, the verb should be in simple past. The first sentence is in present perfect, which is grammatically wrong. As the time of the past action is mentioned, the second sentence makes sense. Another area where we make mistakes is subject verb agreement. As we all know, if the subject is singular, the verb must be singular. And if the subject is plural, the verb has to be plural. Subject-verb disagreement 
is a common error we see in Christians based on error correction. This is quite common in sentences in which two subjects are connected with a conjunction. Let us look into it. See the examples given in the slide. In the first sentence, the two subjects, best friend and classmate, refer to the same person. So it is singular in nature. Hence, the singular verb is is used in the sentence. So the rule is, if two subjects indicates the same person, singular verb must be used. In the second sentence, the two subjects, boy and girl, connected by and is preceded by each. The word each refers singularity. Therefore, singular verb is is used in that sentence. Words like each, every, and many are followed by a singular verb. In the third sentence, the two nouns or subjects, that is, bread and butter, are considered as one thing. Here, bread and butter stand for food. So, it is singular in nature and hence singular verb is is used here. Let us see some more examples. See the examples given in the slide. In the first sentence, we can see two subjects, John, his brothers, are connected with as well as. We can also see the singular verb is in that sentence. This is because when two subjects are joined with as well as, the verb is determined by the first subject. Here the first subject is John, which is singular. So, singular verb is is used in that sentence. If that sentence starts with a plural subject, that is brothers, a plural verb are must be used. This rule is applicable in the case of sentences having conjunctions like together with and along with. In the second sentence, the two subjects, Babu, his friends, are connected with neither nor. Here the verb agrees with the subject immediately before it. In this sentence, the subject immediately before the verb is friends, which is plural in nature. Therefore, it is followed by a plural verb, are. In the third sentence also, the same rule is applicable. If two subjects are combined with not only but also, the verb agrees with the second or the subject immediately before it. Here, the second subject is classmates, which is plural. So, plural verb are is used. As we know, preposition is a word which is placed before a noun or pronoun to show the relation in which the person or thing denoted by the noun stands to something else. Preposition is a difficult proposition to people whose mother tongue is not English. Proposition means problem. For example, there is no preposition in most of the Indian languages. So, we have every chance to make mistakes when we deal with prepositions. Another difficulty is that there is no hard and fast rule regarding the meaning of a preposition. Let us see the reasons for errors based on prepositions. See the examples given in the slide. In the first set of sentences, 
the first sentence has a preposition in. The second sentence does not have it. In that particular sentence, prepositions are not at all necessary because no preposition is used before the word abroad. So, the second sentence is right. Using unnecessary preposition is a grave mistake. In the second set of sentence, the first sentence misses the preposition of which is very much necessary though. So the second sentence with the preposition of is the correct one. Not using necessary preposition is another major mistake. In the third set, the two sentences have different prepositions, that is, on and to, respectively. In that particular sentence, to is the right preposition. The preposition on is used after the word arriving. So, we can say arriving on time and, of course, running to time. Having confusion about the meaning of preposition or about the selection of right preposition is a common reason for committing grammatical errors. Before pondering over these sentences, let me tell you an anecdote which I hope will clear your doubts. Once a boy proposed a girl. Then the girl asked him, what do you do? He said, I work on railways. She was very pleased to know that he was a central government employee. She thought that he was an officer in the railway department. They got married. Only after the marriage, she found out that he was only a track keeper. Why did this happen? Evidently, the girl did not understand the meaning of the preposition used by the boy. He said, I work on railways. This means he works outside the railway station, especially in an open space. Whereas, if he says, I work in railways, he means that he works inside a railway station or railway department. This is how the meaning changes when the prepositions change. Each preposition has a particular meaning in a particular context and the meaning changes from context to context. Once a man went to his English friend's home to invite him to his son's wedding. While giving the invitation, he told the English man, please come and attend the function. The Englishman smiled and saw him off, but he did not attend the wedding. The man discussed this matter with his son. The son, who knew better English, remarked, Daddy, it's your mistake. You did not invite him properly. You should have told him like this. Please do attend the function. You missed that vital word, do. And that made the difference. If you are sincere and earnest in your invitation, you must say, please do come. Do is very necessary in British English. Well, what does this story convey? It tells us how important sentence construction is. The right word in the right place gives the right meaning to a sentence. Therefore, word order should be correct. Otherwise, that will be the cause for mistakes. Look at these sentences. In the first set, there are two sentences which are connected with not only but also. In the same way, in the second set, there are two sentences which are connected with neither nor. In the first set, let us split the sentence into two. 
Tagore wrote poems. Tagore wrote stories. These two sentences are combined using not only but also. Here the rule is, when two sentences have two different subjects, not only must be placed before the first subject and but also before the second subject. If the verbs are different, not only before the first verb and but also before the second verb. If the subjects and verbs are same in two different sentences, not only and but also should be placed where the difference comes. In the given sentence, both subject and verb, Tagore and wrote, are same. The only difference is poems and stories. Hence, the second sentence, Tagore wrote not only poems but also stories, is the correct sentence. This rule is applicable also in case of sentences combined with neither nor. In the second set, we can see two sentences. They are, he did not study well, he did not play well. Here the subject, he, is same in both sentences. But verbs, study and play, are different. So the correct sentence is the second one. He neither studied nor played well. Please note that when we use neither no, we need not use not in the sentence. Let us look at some more examples of others based on construction. Please refer to the examples In the first example, the sentence is comparative in form. Here the subject, he, is compared with his contemporaries. That's why the word than is used in the sentence. Than must be preceded by the comparative form of the adjective. Hence, the word more must be used before the adjective effortlessly. In the second example, the sentence is passive because the doer of the action is not mentioned. We do not know who has taken the poem from an anthology. But the first sentence is an active voice, which means the poem has taken something from an anthology. This is absurd. To get the right meaning, that is, Someone has taken the poem from an anthology. It should be said in correct passive voice. Hence, the answer is the second sentence. This poem has been taken from an anthology. Now the third example. He had two sentences. I got on the bus. It started moving. Are combined with no sooner. The word sooner is comparative and so it must be followed by a than. When we use no sooner, we should split the past verb into did plus verb one. In the sentence, it should be did plus get on. Hence, the second sentence, no sooner did I get on the bus than it started moving, is the right answer. Do you know, one of the most important reasons for making mistakes in English is the influence of our mother tongue. We think and form sentences in our mother tongue, which is the first language that we have learned. So, when we learn English later, what exactly we do is to think in our mother tongue and then translate our thoughts or sentences into English. This mental process is the chief reason for committing errors in English language. See, like any language, English is unique 
and it has its own way of expression. Sometimes its usage or choice of words for a particular situation will be entirely different from the usage in another language for the same situation. Hence, to avoid these errors, we should learn the English way of expression. Look at the sentences given in the slide. In each set, the first sentence is grammatically wrong. In the first sentence, the preposition by is wrongly used. When we use something else for traveling, we can use by. Example, go by car or go by bus. But in these sentences, we use our feet to walk. So the second sentence, let us go on foot, is right. When we want to mention the space in a bus or a train, instead of the word place, we must use the word room. But of course, we can say there is no place in the room. Hence, the second sentence is right in the second set. The first sentence of the third set has three mistakes. We cannot say, we saw a dream. It is irrational, illogical, and unscientific because if we want to see something, we have to open our eyes. The moment we open our eyes, the dream will vanish. Actually, we do not see dreams, but we experience it. So the right word is had. The right word for bad dream is nightmare. And yesterday night must be replaced with last night. All the first sentences of each set are wrong by word translation of sentences made in our mother tongue. Let us see some more examples. See the examples given in the slide. Look at the first set of statements. Expressions like today morning, today evening, etc. are wrong. It should be this morning and this evening. But we can say yesterday morning and tomorrow morning. In the second set, the first sentence is wrong because the word both is not used in a negative sentence. We can say both when. If we want to make it negative, we should say neither when. Both indicates two positive things while neither shows two negative things. In the third set, my future life is a literary translation of a mother tongue usage. But the English usage for this is rest of my life. All these examples show how the influence of our mother tongue causes errors in English. So be extra cautious, alert, and keep away from word-by-word -word translation. Well, in this session, we had a detailed learning about the different types of errors in English. We acquainted and understood some of the most common errors based on tense, subject verb agreement, and preposition. We also found out that the influence of our mother tongue is another main reason for making mistakes in English. So, let us be aware about the various types of mistakes, their causes, and the unique way of sentence construction in English language. This will, no doubt, help us to overcome many of our mistakes in English. In this discussion, we have looked at error correction in the context of simple sentences. Hope for the best. Thank you.